You're listening to Leeds Student Radio. It's three o'clock on Thursday the 14th of February. Good afternoon, this is Alex Monk, Nikki Bremner, and joining us today all the way from California, Sarah Brio. And you're listening to... Sexy Sexy Syntax! Hello and welcome to the third broadcast of Sexy Syntax. As always, we are live on direct transmission from the Leeds Student Radio Studios. Roll up, roll up for our transatlantic special. Today we'll be doing business slightly differently for the most part. With a game show hosted by Nicky Bremner. So get into the groove with Alex Mark, Nicky Bremner... Sarah Brio, with our totally awesome American Special. Hello and welcome back to Sexy Syntax. Um, before we start our American Special, I'd just like to thank everybody for listening. Uh, we've had comments from Ian and Judith from Gosforth for, who think the show should be more grammatically focused and less sex, each to their own. Um, also in episode one, the girl I mentioned who was literally showering in the dark, um, coincidentally she was listening, so I feel extremely embarrassed, so I do apologise, but thankfully I didn't attribute your situation to a name. Also, uh, I said sheep last week, um, I pluralised the word sheep, um, and I have not just let you down as the viewers, I've also let myself down, so I I would like to apologise for that. Um, if anyone's been reading The Reporter on campus, you'll have noticed that Michael Arthur, our Vice Chancellor, said the following. I have had literally hundreds of messages of congratulations. So was the word literally used correctly there or not by our Vice Chancellor? I'll leave you to decide. Nikki, any further comments? Yeah, I've just got to also um, own up to some mistakes and criticisms that I've been given. For example, uh, the pluralisation of words, which I've done wrong quite a few times. Um, I've said uh, there is lots of things and there are, plus singular, I can't think of anything now, but I'll just say there are an apple. Um, (laughs) And we've also been told that we say yeah, yeah quite a lot. So if you've got any suggestions with uh, another word we could say instead of yeah, yeah, that would be most appreciated. Um, Just a couple of shout shout outs as well. (laughs) (laughs) from uh, Adriana from Mexico um, and Max from France, who both said the same thing, that it is to do with uh, the context. It is to do with the context when talking or not talking about sex. (laughs) So lots of sitting on the fence there. Shall we introduce our uh, wonderful guest? Yes, uh, our special guest today is Sarah Brio. Sarah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I am from the sunny, sunny, sunshine state of California. That's usually... Oh! I wish they all could be girls. I was hoping you could. I wish they all could be girls. I wish they all could be California. Yes, I am a California girl. Born and bred. Good. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to have you here uh, momentarily. Oh, that's another one I said last week um, or a couple of weeks ago, which I was caught up on for saying momentarily, which actually means for a short period of time, but we tend to use it for in a bit. But momentarily is an Americanism. So it's just um, apt to point it out on our American special that you've got to be careful about your use of the word momentarily. Um, There's plenty of Americanisms which annoy us to use the word gotten. Sarah, do you use the word gotten? <laughs> it was pointed out to me that I apparently did use the word gotten last night at dinner, but I try not to. I try to be grammatically correct. <laughs> okay, well, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm still not convinced. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I've shamed you and Nikki and the entirety of Leeds. Well, you've got a chance to redeem yourself anyway with the game show. So, uh, oh, huzzah. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to say a word. I'm going to say a word in British uh, English to you, Sarah, and I'm going to say words in American English to you, Alex. And it's a very simple game. You've got to tell me what it means, okay? And you'll get a point if you get it right. And we'll see if you know more about American English 
than Sarah knows about British English, Alex. Okay. Is that all right? Is, are, you, are you ready? Are you confident? Oh, yes. Yes? Okay, sure. do you want to go first? No. Right, Alex, then. Let's go <laughs> oh, first, then. Okay, USA yes. for Alex. Okay. I'm going to give you a nice, easy one, okay, to start. Stroller. Ooh. Is that some kind of, like, roller skates? <laughs> Like I'm, I'm strolling along the street in my brand new strollers. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say no to that. Sarah, do you say that's... Do you want to tell us what stroller is? A stroller is what you'd put um, your baby in when you're walking down the street. You'd call it... Uh, what do you call it? Tro- trolley? No. Trolley. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. We would call it a pushchair. Uh, we would call it a pushchair or a pram <laughs> or, or a buggy. A buggy oh. But a buggy's yeah. a brand. Pushchair okay. or pram. So you've got no points after that, Alex. Um, okay. Commiserations. Okay. British for Brio. Okay. <laughs> bap. 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 Like, maybe I bapped you on the head? <laughs> <laughs> what? what is that? Is that your final answer? Sure. Sure, <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> sure it is. Bap is a soft bread roll or sandwich. What? Or a sandwich made from it. Or it can also mean, in the vulgar slang, <laughs> breasts. Oh. So you could say, oh, she's got a lovely pair of baps. Oh, so crude. Okay, so uh, no, no points so far. Let's talk. Don't even make them easy. You're never going to get to these, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. You're going to get this one, Alex. I'm confident. Booger. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, booger. Uh, somebody who likes to. Someone who boogies. <laughs> Boogie nights. Dun, 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 that is incorrect. Dun, 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 dun. Booger is a piece of nasal mucus. So still nil nil <laughs> after three, three goes. Okay. Bugger all. Bugger all. Well, I've heard bugger off, but isn't that kind of a... No, bugger all. I don't... Um, I'm assuming it's a not-so-nice phrase, like go away or something. I don't know. What does bugger all mean? Bugger all means little or nothing at all. I asked for a pay rise and they gave me bugger all. I was so close. God, this is too difficult, isn't it? Right. Mr. Monk, it's still nil-nil. Can you pull this out the bag? Can you get one right? You can do it. You can find one you can actually get. Okay. With your educational background, you know, being interested in education, I'm going to give you this one. Freshman. Freshman? No, no, no. Fre- <laughs> Freshman. Freshman. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is it some kind of a freshers qualification <laughs> for being a freshman? Actually, you could give him that. You could give him that point. Uh, like freshers <laughs> week, like... Pre- pre-screening before you can start at college. Sarah, what is a freshman? A freshman is what you'd call a fresher. It's a first year. Oh, it is, right, okay. Yeah, so I say he gets that. Yeah, I'll decide Loosely. at the end. If it's still if it's still close, I'll decide whether, whether it gives you oh, that okay. one. How about okay. half a point, Keith? Half, half, half. Half right. point. Half yeah. points. Okay, <laughs> next one. Uh, right. For Brio, British for Brio. Candy floss. Candy floss. That sounds like floss that you can eat, which... Right, got it, yeah, like, keep going, yeah, yeah. It's... It's some type of delicious treat. It, yeah, no more specific. Direction. More specific. Uh, What's the word in in American? I have no idea. Licorice? I don't know. <laughs> what? That is incorrect. Oh. It is a spun sugar confection, which in the US of A is referred to as cotton, cotton candy. candy. Cotton candy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I uh, hate cotton candy. Okay, fine. Good, good. Okay. So do I. Okay. Mr. Monk. The next one is... Play hooky. Play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. That. I have no idea. Sorry. To play hooky. To be a hooker. <laughs> this is sexy thin tax. I, I, I think we may have to have another show where we make it a little bit easier for you guys. <laughs> um, play hooky is to play truant from school to cut class. The UK also uses sky, bunk off, playing wag, wagging off. Or mooching, apparently. I've never heard of Never heard of those. Okay, so, uh, oh my God, well, I want you to win, because you're our guest. Um, but I'm just thinking. Right. Ghoulies. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sounds like I'm not going to give you that one. All right. Gob. <laughs> um, gob stopper. <laughs> I, gob's like a, a unit of measurement. I had gobs of fun. I have no You measure that with a gobometer. <laughs> That is absolutely incorrect. Oh my god! It is mouth. What? Yeah, shut your gob. Oh, the ignorance! I'm oh, joking. Dear. I'm a horrible, <laughs> yeah. horrible. Person. Oh, I know nothing. Uh, Ghoulies about just, but incidentally, is uh, British for the testicles, uh, oh. and actually comes from from the Hindi word golly, which means ball. Fabulous. Yeah. Good, Alex. 
Mr. Monk. Okay. God, what, which can you get? Yeah, I don't think you can which get Which can you get? Okay. <laughs> if I said something came out of left field, what would I be referring to? Um, the football has gone left-sided. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a left-field winger. <laughs> I think what we're highlighting here is that there are a lot of words that are, are used. And Sarah, have you known all the words that, that I've said in, in yes. American? Oh, yeah. Yes. So they are fairly commonly used. Mm-hmm. So what does left field mean? Are you, I would say it came out of left field. I wasn't expecting it. Um, like the, uh, the vice chancellor's decision to whatever, retire, whatever, came out of left field. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that makes sense. Right. Um, whose go is it? Oh, is it? Sarah's. I think it's mine. Okay, okay, I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, great. Bumbag. Oh, Oh, is that like like a we'd call it a fanny pack? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Yes, I got a point. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was looking forward to that one. Oh, I've right. actually heard that one. All right, so it's one zero I've or zero point five. Well done. Well right, done. Okay, Tremendous work. Yeah. Okay, I'm. Yeah. Thinking, what, what can you get? Um, USA for Alex. This is relevant for for uh, various reasons. John. What <laughs> John Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> what is a John? It's slang. John, not a Johnny, a John. Oh goodness! Um, can I abstain from answering this one, please? You can pass if you want. Yeah, pass out <laughs> card. <laughs> pass out <laughs> card. <laughs> what? What is a John? Oh, I don't want to say. Can I abstain too? We know. What According, I've never heard of this, but a John is a slang for a toilet. Yeah. And it also says it's the client of a prostitute. <laughs> I, I of a trollop. Never, I've, I've never heard <laughs> the latter half of that. Never heard the latter half of that definition. No. Okay, Sarah. Oh boy. To tell a porky pie. Does that have anything to do with the porcupine? Like the animal? A porky pie. No, it doesn't. Uh, I have no idea. I've never heard of that. Pork pies. What does pork pie mean, Mr. Monk? Lie. To tell lies. Oh. It's from the Cockney rhyming slang. I could have extracted Apples and that. pears, stairs. That kind of thing. Yeah. Deep sea diver, fiver. Yeah, <laughs> okay. One more then. Should we say one more? We've got enough time for one more? Two. Let's do two, two, two more. more. Two right. more. What can I give you? What can I give you? That you're not going to know. Um, <laughs> scuttlebutt? <laughs> That's for me, is it? It is for you. Scuttlebutts. Um, <laughs> is it like the equivalent of scallywag? <laughs> you scuttle bug. <laughs> is it? Uh, no. No, it's not. No. no. I, scuttle, yeah. Go on. on. Very rare. <laughs> Enlighten I us. Be, I wouldn't use that. Right, I'll give you another one then because that was too hard. Stick shift. Um, <laughs> is that when you've got like a really bad shift? Like you've got the you've got the duff <laughs> shift. You know, you've got the. St- <laughs> that is incorrect. Uh, it is a car with manual transmission that we would call a manual car. Okay. All right, so you're still on 0.25 or 0.5. Excellent. On okay. Minging. Minging. Oh, I knew this one. Well, I know that a minger is like an ugly person, right? <laughs> so minging... Yes. Some Sometimes known as butters, yeah. So What? Known as butters? Have you not heard the term yeah. butters used as she's, well? She's pretty, but for her face... <laughs> that. Is that the origin? That's what I heard. Okay, well, I'm think? going to give you a half a point for yeah. that because it's yes. from the Scots language, smelling strongly and unpleasantly. Oh. Yeah. Dirty, rotting, smelling, unattractive. The girl I last I, I pulled last night was minging. Oh. Okay, last one for you, Mr. Monk. Happy Valentine's Day with that one. Uh, what can I give you? What can I give you? Uh, <laughs> Jello. Jello. Um, is that like jelly mixture? Like, you know, I'm going to buy some Jello. It's like... I'm going to buy some jello. <laughs> yes, I'm going to give you that because it's a yeah, gelatin dessert that, that we would call jelly. Yes. That was the easiest one. So now it's. Thank you. It's uh, to win. I want Sarah or, to win. Yeah, Aww, to win. Thank you. Which you can have a choice between naff off, rogering, and tara. Can I have a fourth choice? <laughs> <laughs> I have a horrible info file. <laughs> no, you can't have another choice. Well, you could have kip. What? You know what, what kip po- is? Podging. I know what faff. Podging. I know what faff is. <laughs> you know what faff is? Yeah, it's t- like to faff about. Like you aren't really doing anything. Like if you're being lazy, 
during the day. Very good, Sarah. Can I have that one? Yeah, you can have that oh, one. So unfair. I thought yeah. you were going to give her naff off or podging. Yeah. Podge the bear. I haven't got podge. I haven't got podge on the list. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. But it's a very vulgar term. It's not actually really a British term. It's more like a just used to like the small town where I live. Well, I'm going to admit defeat by saying fair enough. Um, fair dues. Well, that's well, Sarah won. Uh, well done. Congratulations. But just, just, just out of interest, uh, "tara" is the exclamation of farewell, which uh, originates from the Merseyside area. Oh. Tara. <laughs> Rogering is a vulgar term to. Well, not that. It's not that bad, is it? But it's fairly vulgar, informal. To engage in a sexual act, I'd give her a good Rogering. Uh, Nafoff is to uh, is a dated slang, so those who use it, uh, it's very dated, is <laughs> to shove it, get lost, go away. That's that, and kip is to sleep. Oh. So there you go. And there we have it. That completes the quiz. Um, and we're now going to move on to, before we get on to our pronunciation section, which is, of course, going to be three American words, we'll start now with our sexual section, which is all about Sunset Suspicious Parents, a programme, which is now on its, I think it's its third series on the BBC, and it's all about sending two fairly unruly teenagers abroad to one of these kind of Greek or Mediterranean islands such as uh, Corfu to see how they get on um, surviving without the parents but there's one catch the parents come too let's play the trailer the freedom of your first ever holiday with your mates where everyone's up for it I'm not missing all. and anything goes cheap booze I'm really drunk Oh. Dirty dancing and that all important independence oh. away from mum and dad. I hope my mum does never watch this. Sorry, dad. <laughs> but what the teenagers don't know is that the parents are coming too. That's disgusting. <laughs> Secretly watching. We have just five minutes. He's an absolute bloody disgrace, yes. Sneakily spying. <laughs> and outrageously hiding. Tricky, tricky. All to see if their kids can stand on their own two feet. <laughs> There's one thing that we said we didn't want to see. I'm starting to wonder if I even know Ashley. I'm shocked. Is Dad? <laughs> Will the parents like what they see? You've turned from a girl to a woman. <laughs> As the teenagers get the shock of their lives. What? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Why are you on my holiday? <laughs> okay, that was the trailer. Um, so the, the first question then, um, we'll aim this one at Sarah. Would you, as a parent, you're not a parent yet, you might be. No, no, no. It might be. Yeah. <laughs> you might Did be. we not do a demographic uh, study before? <laughs> <laughs> So, hypothetically, Sarah, if you're a parent, would you send one of your children slash kids on this holiday? Well, spring break is a very typical American experience for teens and young adults. So, as a parent, I would hope to trust my, my child. I would let them go. I don't think I'd follow them. But I'd hope that I would have enough trust in them and their, their character. to Trust in them that they would not do what? That they would not you know, fall out windows drunk, <laughs> you yeah. know, and not... And respect women. Yes, well, if, yes. Ah, so if, 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 you, if your children did say, I'm going to go on this holiday, and you, were, you weren't going to follow them, what kind of tips would you give them before they go? So would you say, be careful, make sure you don't, blah, 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 or do, blah, 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 blah. Do. Do. Well, I'd say do make sure you have a really cute swimsuit. Because that's <laughs> obviously very important. But then that might them, make them uh, objects of sexual desire for the hordes of men that go to then Cancun I'd say take and take a really big Cabo. stick to beat them off with. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I just I just hope that the relationship we had built up to that point would be enough that I wouldn't really need to worry about them because I'd trust them. Okay. And do you think there's a difference between uh, sons and daughters and how the parents perceive them? So you've got perhaps the overprotecting dad with the daughter, mm -hmm. the overprotecting mum for the son. That That's this general stereotype but do you think they tend to let their sons do what they want but they're really protective over their daughters would you say i mean put yourself in that scenario i think it varies i mean i'm an only child so i feel as though both my parents are equally protective with me but my parents have always been very trusting of me which i appreciate um do you so think it is better that they're trusting of you and like let you do whatever you want 
and then you won't actually do all these crazy things. Or yeah. do you think? You, so you think that the sort of the liberal uh, approach to parenting? Yeah, it, it worked for me. I'll say because I tend to parent myself more than more than anyone else because I'm just that type of personality, and I always appreciated that growing up. My parents, you know, they told me what the rules were and I never really went against them. I think I was grounded one time in my life and I I had fun because I got to, you know, just play in my room all day. <laughs> so it wasn't that type of grounding, it was no. uh, it was a it was a reward. Kind of. <laughs> so have you ever been on a spring break holiday as you have in the USA? No, I never have. Would you do you regret that? No, but in the States it's a little different because you aren't legally, I'll say legally, allowed to drink till 21. So generally, you wouldn't even go on spring break till then. I just turned 21 over the summer. So I, there really wasn't much of an opportunity for me to do that anyway, but it's just not my scene. No. Okay. I, I went, I, when I was living in Mexico, I went to quite a few of the resort areas in Mexico when there were American people coming for spring break. And Americans it was, are crazy. It, it was an eye-opener. Because <laughs> you can drink in Mexico when you're 18. Yeah, tell us a bit more. But what what is just for the the uh, listeners at home who don't know what spring break is? What is spring break? And I'm a boring person, so I'm not a good example. Well, Nikki. Oh, I don't know about spring break. I mean, I do know. I mean, I'm not the best person to 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 talk to, but um, it's in the the March April uh, time. Is it in March or April? Yeah, towards Easter. Yeah, and they're around the Easter, and that's just the time when they just go and just have fun and just get mortal, as we would say up north. (laughs) <laughs> get uh, drunk, engage in sexual activities, let their hair down, and just go, spring break, yeah, uh-huh, cool, man. <laughs> so, awesome. would you ever go to one of these uh, Mediterranean islands, then, on a sunset suspicious type holiday? Um, I didn't go, um, I, I'm, I don't regret not going, but I did go to Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach, Ooh. with some of the mm-hmm. lads, but it wasn't, it wasn't really as crazy, it was kind of very like it was a very nice holiday but it was a lads holiday um and i've been to zanti as well but i went with my girlfriend and we didn't go to like the crazy area but we went through it and it was so horrible it was just horrible it just made me just feel sick yeah because it's probably very different in real life to what you see on the television isn't it well, what I see on the television for me is absolutely horrible as well i don't know being there is probably even yeah but i mean i suppose it's quite fun to you know You've got to be in that mindset. Yeah. yeah, you've just got to get really drunk and just do crazy things. But you, when you're young, it's kind of you're allowed to. Our society allows us to have this sort of breaking in period. You know, it does the same with freshers at university. We kind of just write them off, say, oh, well, you're not going to learn anything this year. You're just going to settle in in your first year. And you're going to get drunk and we're happy to let you do that. Yeah. And we're not going to kick you out of uni if you do crazy, stupid things. You can basically do whatever you want. Do you agree with that, Alex? Yeah. Um I, uh, <laughs> Were you a crazy spring breaker yourself? No, no, no. I've I've never done one of these kind of holidays. Or he would and, never and, admit it. You and I don't, no, no, I haven't, and I don't, I don't intend on doing it. I think, um, I just think it's just not my cup. It's like Sarah, it's not my cup of tea. Um, and yeah, uh, I don't want to change the subject on that note, but I've got <laughs> to. We've got to move on to the pronunciation section. So, Nikki, you'll start with the first word on the list, followed by Sarah, followed by me. First word. Secretary. 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 Okay, so Nikki and I are obviously British and we both say secretary. Uh, but you'll find uh, American people tend to say secretary or secretary without even the R in the middle. Um, the British way of doing things really with a word which ends in A-R-Y is to shorten it. So secretary, the same rule applies to ordinary, dictionary and which month are we in now? February. 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 <laughs> but yeah, you've got people who even, again, drop the R and say February. Um, <laughs> Nikki, I noticed in a previous episode of Sexy Syntax, you said dictionary. You didn't say dictionary. So you didn't. Apologise to you, apologise to my family. And you let yourself <laughs> down. My girlfriend and to society. I'm just curious to know about the inconsistencies. Why do you shorten secretary? I can't say why I do, to be honest. It just, it, to be honest. To, not not to lie to you. Yeah, um, I just don't know. I don't know why it just slips out. You want to be American, Nikki. Just admit it. Maybe it's because I watch so much American TV. That might be why. Um, but February. You said it correctly at the beginning, so you, you score brownie points there. But can I, can I just ask a question? Is it correct? Is it American? Or is it actually correct? No, it's, um, it's just a British-American thing. Right, we yeah. say secretary, okay. Americans say secretary. Yeah, next. Um, schedule. 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 
<laughs> now, this is an interesting one. School is spelt in the same way, and we, you know, it's unanimous. We all say school with a, with a, as if there's a K in it. But with schedule, it is um, schedule. Uh, so it's a silent C. Um, I was watching, because I'm sad, I was watching Waterloo Road the other week, and uh, the receptionist said, I can't schedule you in to see the head teacher as he has a very busy schedule. So for the verb to schedule you in, she dropped the C. But the noun, a schedule, she said schedule. So if you're someone who doesn't know what to say, you're worried you're going to slip up, just be British and say timetable. I think... <laughs> just I think, change the word. Just change the word. When in doubt, change the word. Because I think in, a, in the USA, you tend to say schedule a lot yeah. more. Like you see, I'm going to look at my schedule, whereas we say timetable. And because of that, because of... And we watch British... We watch a lot of American TV. Yeah. We pick that word up as schedule and we assume the C's pronounced, but it's actually schedule. Mm. Um, so remember that, that one. Final word. Either. Either or either. You can say it either or either way. Oh, very good. I say either. Um, there was a study in the late 80s, early 90s, which indicates that 80% of British speakers say either and 80% of USA speakers say either. So it's very much a US-UK divide. Mm. Um, but as Sarah says, uh, she points out that you can say either. <laughs> but the, the same rule applies for neither. Again, it's mm. neither, neither. Um, so either, neither, either neither but what's funny is the word receive um is spelt the same way it's the e it's c e i uh, the e becomes comes before the i but no one ever says receive everybody says receive <laughs> so with that logic you would assume it's either but <laughs> as i've pointed out 80 percent of british speakers say either um and i think it's there's probably more speakers in Britain these days who are saying either, and that's generally because of Americanization with a Z. But uh, I think there's no right or way, wrong way of saying it, but if you want to be British, if you want to be quintessentially British, stick to either, neither. If you want to be American, say either, neither. Um, and that's all we've got time for today on Sexy Syntax. I'm so sorry to end so abruptly. Thank you to Sarah, our special American guest. You've been literally amazing. <laughs> oh, <thank> um, <laughs> and it's been great having totally you here. Awesome. Totally awesome. Totally <laughs> awesome. And stay with us here on lsrfm.com for the lowdown, which will be with you momentarily. The sound, the sound of students in Leeds. 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 This is LSRFM.com. <laughs>